all right students let's go ahead and now revise the next chapter the next chapter is valuation sir valuation under customs everyone listen to me very carefully once you have gone ahead and imported some goods you have to pay custom duty right everyone custom duty is to be paid on value multiplied by rate of exchange into rate of duty so in this chapter we'll be going ahead and learning how to go ahead and calculate the value on which you will multiply the rate of exchange and then the rate of duty and you'll find out your custom duty from exam point of view a plus graded chapter six marks to hundred percent are going to come everyone over here when you go ahead and understand valuation ka chapter in valuation you have to go ahead and understand certain terms which are being used in international trade now when i go ahead and talk about those uh, certain terms which are used in international trade now there are certain types of contracts which are there there are certain types of contracts which are there now if i go ahead and tell one person that i want a machine he can go ahead and tell me the x factory price what do you mean by the x factory price x factory price means the production cost plus the profit which will give me the x factory price he'll tell me sir i will leave the machine at my factory gate you can pick the machine and you can go so that's the x factory price which is there now sir if i go ahead and tell one person that i want the machine at least till the port you make the machine reach then then he will go ahead and give me as free alongside ship the price which is free what is free alongside ship price that sir he will say okay i will load the machine in the truck i will pay the loading cost transportation cost then whatever the freight insurance in the in our country we will pay and we'll make the goods reach till the ship ka port besides the ship will make it reach that is known as free alongside ship contract under fos contract basically the seller is required to deliver the machine alongside the ship till the goods reach the alongside the ship all the expenses are borne by the seller post that the risk of the goods get transferred to the buyer now i am supposed to load the goods and take the goods to india sir what is the next kind of contract the next kind of contract is fov contract in an fov contract what happens the goods the cost of loading the goods and export duty etc also comes on the seller so if seller has gone ahead and given me a contract where he is going ahead and give telling me fob contract it means he is going to further load the goods in the ship whatever export duty etc is payable in the port of exportation that means the us port supposing if i am get, getting the goods from us then in the us port whatever the expenses are there to load export duty etc that will also be included in the fob free on board price now if i have gone ahead and contacted one person and he told me sir i will go ahead and give you a cif price then cif price means the cost that is the fob price including the insurance and the freight which is nothing other than fob plus the insurance cost which is there plus whatever is the on the way ka cost of transportation cost of insurance included it will give me the cif cost insurance and freight and the goods will reach to india always remember one thing cif is the assable value on which you are required to pay the custom duty are we clear everyone sir once the goods have reached the indian port after that any unloading cost which is there port ka charges which are there any extra expenses which are there are not to be included remember one thing port dues import duty paid etc all this will not be included in your assable value basically port due will not be included import duty to will be paid on the assable value only port dues etc loading and loading charges people will not be included till the goods reach the indian port whatever the cost are there x factory price sir then transportation till the port loading in unloading in the port loading in the ship export duty cost of transportation cost of insert till the goods hit the hit the indian port all the cost are to be included after the goods hit the indian port any cost which are there in the indian port are never to be included are we all clear till here then sir might be after the goods hit the indian port transportation to an england container depot container freight station transit transshipment cost remember one thing transit transshipment all these costs are never to be included once the ship hits the indian port after that none of the cost to be included now one very good term which is there is a demerit charge demerit charges means when the goods have been unloaded if you don't clear the goods from the shipping port from the port of importation this is the port of importation where goods have come for clearance baba if you don't clear the goods within a time limit then they go ahead and start charging you demerit charges at the indian port if you pay any demerit charges at the 
port of importation remember one thing never to be included because once the ship has hit the indian port all the charges not to be included but my next question over here is sir supposing this mother vessel is standing over here the big vessel this big vessel say load unloading will be done in a small boat and then the goods come to the india then baba in that scenario this big boat which is standing at the port of importation although it is standing at the indian port but because this big ship is standing at the indian port it is usually before the indian port only but it is told that ship demerit charges paid at the indian port so baba the ship demerit charges this light small boat charges unloading in the small boat ka charges all remember one thing all are to be included because this although the wording used are ship demerit charges paid at the port of importation but these are actually incurred before the port of importation and these are to be included but only demerit charges at the indian port not to be included sir what if demerit charges are there at the us port included can i go ahead everyone anything paid any charges paid before are to be included anything paid at the port of importation not to be included and here i told you demerit charges paid at the indian port not to be included but ship demerit charges mother vessel ka charges which are there ship demerit charges because the mother vessel was standing sir all the small boats lighter age bar, char bar charges are to be included this was one very important point which you have to take care remember us if goods are coming into india us is the port of exportation india is the port of importation port of importation is basically that port where the goods have come so that you can clear it or you can ship you can put it in the warehouse everyone over here now when we go ahead and talk about valuation remember one thing valuation means assessable value value means always the assessable value custom duty is paid on what everyone value multiplied by rate of exchange into rate of duty when you are trying to find out the value by applying section number 14 section number 14 has section number 14 2 and 14 1 14 2 goes ahead and says that sir value will always be the tariff value tariff value in which cases everyone gold silver etc cases may always remember government goes ahead and fixes a tariff value if government has fixed the tariff value for your goods whatever price you get the goods doesn't matter tariff value pay you have to pay the duty but sir if government has not fixed the tariff value for my item then i have to pay the duty on transaction value remember what do you mean by transaction value transaction value means the price which you have paid or the price which is payable for the goods when the for the goods it means the total amount paid or payable remember one thing if you have gone ahead and got some goods from the us supposing it was ten thousand dollars and when the goods had come to india international prices had come down and you had renegotiated and you had made the price and the exporter made the price only eight thousand dollar now you are going to pay eight thousand dollar the transaction value is going to be eight thousand the next one over here is price paid or payable when sold for export to india when he has sold for export to india at the place of time and place of importation at the importation port whatever is the value that is the transaction value which is the cf value is your transaction value when the buyer and seller should be unrelated and the price is the sole consideration price should be the sole consideration only then that can be the transaction value once the transaction value has been arrived by you then now you have to go ahead and rule number 11 says you have to file a declaration baba declaration as to the truth and accuracy of the value which you have declared you have to go ahead and file declaration by the importer or his agent disclosing full and accurate value now once you go ahead and make the declaration if the officer has a doubt if the officer has a doubt then what will the officer do everyone rule number 12 if the officer has a doubt as to the truth and accuracy of the value declared then he will ask the importer to furnish information documents evidence and after receiving or if no response has been given by you if no response has been given proper officer still has a doubt then he will reject the or if you have given that document but she still has a doubt then he'll reject the transaction value uh, and if you request he will intimate the grounds for rejection and also give you the opportunity of being heard. Once the officer goes ahead and rejects the transaction value, he will go ahead and apply what? He will do reassessment. Basically, what assessment you have done, self-assessment, he will reassess the duty by going ahead and applying the valuation rules. Are we clear, everyone? And valuation rules are always applied sequentially, means he will go with rule number four, five, six, seven, etc. Everyone over here, sir. For an example, value is always the assessable value means on which I have to pay the duty. Assessable value is always the transaction value or the tariff value. Tariff value is not there, then I'll take transaction value. Transaction value may I'll go ahead and make a declaration. Declaration may officer does not have a doubt on my declaration which I have gone ahead and made. Then Baba always remember rule number three one says your as transaction value, which is your CI value, only will become a assessable value, provided you fulfill the conditions which are given under three. 2, 3, 2 may there are 4 conditions which are given, 3, 2 ka 4 conditions are over here on the left hand side, 3, 2 ka 
four condition number one no restriction as to the disposition means the exporter who has gone ahead and exported the goods to me he has not gone ahead and given any restriction on the disposition or use of the goods by the buyer except gopal condition baba he has not gone ahead and given any restriction or he has not gone ahead and given any restriction as to the disposition means how i am going to dispose the imp imported goods or i am how i am going to use it except gopal condition g means geographical area ka condition o means of other restrictions which are not impacting the price p a means public authority ka restriction and l means law related if any restriction are there those are fine but other than that if there is any restriction which is impacting the uh, basically with restriction as to the disposition or use of the goods then baba your value will not be accepted and sir valuation rule will be applied the next one is sale should not be a subject to a condition for which the value cannot be determined always remember it should be an unconditional sale if condition are attached to the sale then valuation rule will be applied the third one you should not be paying anything subsequently to the seller if you are going ahead and paying any subsequent sale proceed to the seller value can be identified then baba adjustment will be done in the ci value but if value could not be identified what are you going to pay in the future subsequent sale proceed could not be identified then baba for which adjustment cannot be made then in that scenario valuation rule will be applied the next one is buyer and seller should be unrelated only then transaction value will become your assessable value but if buyer and seller are related also rule number 33 goes ahead and says even if rule number 33 says even if the buyer and seller are related transaction value will be accepted if relationship did not influence the price or you prove that sir importer demonstrate that declared value closely approximates the value under valuation rule number 4 5 7 and 8 are we clear everyone but if you can't prove that then officer will go ahead and apply valuation rule and find out the value always remember in customs what do you mean by in custom what do you mean by related person scope plus family plus sole agent which we had learned in gst same to same over here scope plus family plus sole agent but what they have gone ahead and told scope may s means shares S means shares greater than equal to 25% in both of them. That was in GST. But in customs, it is shares equal to how much everyone? 5%. Shares equal to how much everyone? Equal to or more than 5% in both of them. Both of them. Both of them. So if I am holding A limited is holding in B limited 5% share, we are not related. I am holding in B also. I am holding in C also. Then B and C become related. The next one over is control. If I am controlling the other person, control is always 51%. If I am holding in the other person 51% share, then Baba, I am controlling that person, and then we both are related person. For an example, if Ram Limited is holding in Sham Limited 30% share, is Ram and Sham Sham related person? No, no, no. 51% is control, and because of share holding 55%, these two become related. You and this does not become related person. Are we clear, everyone? Shares. It greater than equal to 25 uh, 5 percent 25 was in GST in customs it is 5 percent in both of them C for control Baba what is control if you are going ahead and controlling it means you are holding at least 51 percent share in the other person C means control O means officer or directors of each other's business P means partner E for employer employee family Baba family has not been de defined under customs act but here you can take family as a normal family father mother son wife etc and Baba Sole agent over here. Sole agent is not related person in custom unless it falls anywhere in family plus scope. Are we clear, everyone? Only if sole agent. So if there is a sole agent only, then he is not a related person unless he is falling anywhere in scope plus family. Are we clear, everyone? Now listen to me very carefully. So you went ahead and one was the tariff value. Baba, tariff value is not there in your case. Then transaction value will come. You made a declaration. You made a declaration. Officer did not accept your declaration. Then valuation rule will come. Sir, officer accepted your declaration, but four conditions which were there, you did not fulfill. If you don't fulfill any one of the condition, then also rule number three four goes ahead and says the value cannot be determined under three one means your transaction value is not accepted. Then valuation rule will come over here. And valuation rule may the first first rule which comes is rule number. Four. Rule number four goes ahead and talks about assessable value is the transaction value of identical goods. So if you had gone ahead and imported some certain item, and officer is going ahead and trying to find out the value, then officer will go ahead and apply valuation rule. The first valuation rule is identical goods ka rule. Identical goods ka value he'll go ahead and find out. So what do you mean by identical goods, everyone? He will say whatever is the. So if I went ahead and imported iPhone, and officer is trying to find out the value, officer will go ahead and see if somebody had imported exactly the same iPhone. 
then what is the value that was the what was accepted in this case that will be accepted in your case also are we clear everyone so it says over here identical goods means imported goods which are same in all respect except minor difference produced in the same country by the same or different person but does not include those goods for which in design and engineering was undertaken by the buyer and provided to the seller free of cost at a reduced cost so those will not be identical goods which scale a design and engineering was undertaken in india are we clear everyone then it says over here identical goods so if officer is going ahead and trying to find out the value of your identical goods means your goods if he is trying to find out the value then he will go ahead and apply the valuation which was adopted for what similar not similar identical goods identical goods means which were imported goods imported goods same in all respect basically same country same person or different person but those ke liye those will not be identical goods for which design and engineering was undertaken in india are we clear everyone now once the officer has gone ahead and found out the identical goods identical goods should be which identical goods which were imported into india at or about the same time which are imported into india at or about the same time same commercial level or substantial came same quantity or else baba different commercial level or quantities subject to adjustment the next one over here is once he has found out the identical goods ka value then he will go ahead and further make the adjustment in freight and insurance for an example if officer was trying to find out the identical goods of identical val, uh, goods ka value of this goods and some identical goods were of this goods ka value officer is trying to find out identical goods have come over here and baba here the freight and insurance were more than and here might be had imported from this person over here and here say here also I, here goods had come now this identical goods which are there the freight and insurance was more so when you are going in and applying this goods ka value over here then you will make the adjustment or freight and insurance adjustment for freight and insurance under section number 102 has to be done if significant differences were there if minor difference then they will ignore it remember if more than one identical goods have come lowest will be taken as the acceptable value sir the second one over here is rule number 5 rule number 5 says acceptable value is the transaction value of similar goods what do you mean by similar goods exactly same as the identical goods only similar means they are commercially interchangeable identical goods means exactly the same minor difference but but similar goods means not exactly the same similar characteristic it says imported goods not alike in all respect but have like characteristic and like component enabling them to perform what same function and commercially interchangeable rest all these things should remain same in similar goods also that it should be produced in the same country by the same person or different person and it will not include those will not be similar goods for which design and engineering work was undertaken in india and provided by the seller provided by the buyer to the seller free of cost or at reduced price are we clear everyone now if similar goods once has been identified then everything remains the same similar goods which were imported at or about the same time same to same imported at or about the same time similar goods ka value which similar goods ka value will be taken which were imported at the same commercial level or same quantity different commercial level then adjustment will be done sir freight and insurance ka adjustment to, to be done and more than one similar goods ka value if it has come then baba they will take the lowest that is why it is told value will be transaction value of similar goods at or about the same time clause b c 2 3 this one b c 2 3 exactly of rule number 4 will apply put at is put at is are we clear everyone the next one over here is rule number 6 rule number 6 goes ahead and gives gyan rule number 6 says if you can't apply 3 your value was not accepted 4 was not there 5 is not acceptable then please apply 6 and 6 nay 7 and 8 but here one important point which rule number 6 told is an importer can request and proper officer can approve that he can apply rule number 8 before rule number 7 then baba comes rule number 7 rule number 7 is your deductive value what do you mean by deductive value india ka resale price say all the expenses will be deducted and the port ka value will be arrived at it means the resale unit price of the imported or identical goods or the similar goods in the greatest aggregate quantity when it was sold baba the identical goods similar goods or the goods which are imported the greatest aggregate quantity you have to see the greatest aggregate quantity at which those goods were sold in india from that the commission paid all the expenses in india to be reduced commission paid profits made general expenses processing costs which are in india cost of transportation and associate and associated cost custom duties and other taxes paid in india you have to reduce and you will arrive at the acceptable value remember one thing it is nothing india ka resale price minus all the commission general profits except general expenses cost of transportation insurance custom duty taxes and you will arrive at the port ka 
assessable value and not that officer will go ahead and charge you the duty baba port or airport also it can be if goods were imported by air the next one over here is if resale price at or about the same time if what is it everyone if resale price at or about the same time is unavailable then they are telling unit price at the earliest date after the import but before the expiry of 90 days officer will wait for 90 days to go ahead and do the finally assess the duty everyone over here finally assessment of duty will happen on the value so for finding out the value and assessment of duty officer will wait for how many days everyone 90 days once the goods are sold in india that price will be taken reduced and deductive value deducted deductive value will be arrived at the next one is rule number eight assessable value will be the computed value what do you mean by computed value baba the person who has sold you deductive means india ka resale price is deduct and arrive computed means his price say the seller who has, or a person who has sent you the goods in india his price say you you will keep making the adjustment under 10 1 10 2 and arrive at the indian selling price so it says over here cost of material which the person has sent you the goods cost of material his processing cost which was there then his profit general expenses up to the port of origin his port may basically his cost of making the goods then baba loading unloading handling charges till the port then baba cost of section number 10 to cost of transportation cost of insurance as per section number 10 to will be added and indian port pay value will be determined now people tell me one thing rule number four identical goods not there rule number five similar goods not there rule number six told seven and eight seven and eight you could not apply it. or eight and seven first eight and then seven might be you imported some machine people tell me one thing you imported some machine from your parent company who had gone ahead and send you the machine now the parent company when it send you the machine that machine never is sold in india so you can't apply seven so you'll apply eight are we clear and then might be you can apply seven and baba if that is also not possible always remember rule number nine says assessable value by applying what residual method residual method says what value determined using reasonable means consistent with the principles and general provision of the rules and on the base of data available in india reasonable means will be applied and you'll find out the value for an example rule number nine can say that sir officer can do what identical goods from the same country are not there then from other country identical goods similar goods ka value can be adopted for your goods which you have imported are we clear everyone but remember rule number nine says that for value determination following shall not be the basis well following cannot be the basis means officer cannot go ahead and apply this as reasonable means are we clear everyone machos d what is machos d m for minimum custom values a for arbitrary or 50 says values c for cost of production not computed as per rule number eight how rule number eight has told you are not computing at that way then h for highest of two alternative officers selling inky pinky ponky i'll take the highest one no 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 you don't do all those things highest and all those things one is arbitrary and 50 cs that you can't do highest of two alternatives you can't do selling price of goods for export to a country other than india can't be taken then for o means other than india exporter sold the goods to any other country other than india that price cannot be adopted in india then s for selling price of indian goods can't be taken identical goods similar goods etc always they told imported goods you can't tell take indian goods ka selling price and d for domestic market price of the exporting country may whatever the domestic market price was there that cannot be adopted in india domestic market price of the goods in the exporting country so these are not reasonable means this means officer can't adopt and find out the residual method make value can i go ahead everyone now rule number 11 you went ahead and declared your value now the value can be rejected by the officer what are the reasons for rejection that can be there the proper officer has a doubt on that value declared under rule number 11 you are declared and he will reject why will he reject he can reject because significant differences in identical or similar goods you imported iphone for 100 rupees officer will tell people are importing for 50,000. how did you get for 100 or 1000 rupees then sale value sale involves abnormal or special discount fraudulent or manipulated document misdeclaration of goods in the parameter or non-declaration as per the parameter in all the scenario the officer can go ahead and reject the value are we all 100% clear people listen to me very carefully whenever the officer is taking rule number four rule number five etc my value of identical goods etc he will take already the value which is accepted under rule number three and not assessed provisionally means the final values only he will go ahead and take are we clear for which the assessable value was already accepted that value will take he will not take those goods ka value which was provisionally assessed are we clear everyone now listen to me very carefully under section 14 1 you took the transaction value you made a declaration officer liked your declaration no problem at all he did not have any doubt then baba 3 2 ka condition also is satisfied then 
you come under 31 which goes ahead and says that sir your ci value which is your transaction value will become your sl value but subject to adjustment under rule number 10 and rule number 10 so basically when you start rule number 10 card adjustment you should always start with fob fob may you should do rule number 10 one card adjustment which are five adjustments over here and then baba you will get adjusted fob and on that you should do 10 to card adjustment cost of transportation and cost of insurance and you will arrive at the cif this paragraph which is there this paragraph which is there i've zoomed it and i've elaborated in the next chart which is more in detail please come to the next chart everyone now determination of assible value people over here first of all when we go ahead and determine the assible value assible value means what everyone the cif value basically is the assible value but cif value adjusted as per section number 10 1 and 10 2 okay everyone so in your exam always remember one thing first of all never start solving your question with the cif always first arrive at the fob and then baba go ahead and solve your question sir why because my chance by chance the question goes ahead and talks about air in case of air we always compare so your cif value which is there might be including the actual air freight which is there so you have to go ahead and for the purpose of custom valuation you have to first arrive at the fob then air ka case may be always take 20 percent is the maximum and then baba cost of insurance and then you arrive at the actual cif are we clear everyone so never start your question so ka answer solving with what everyone cif please arrive at fob and then start so sir how do we do it in the exam first of all your expected price will be there expected price ke saath, you will take freight and insurance and all the expenses up to the port then you will get free alongside the ship in the free along the side then loading will be done on the ship so sir loading charges at the shipping port and export duty when he will give you fob value in fob we will go ahead and start adding section number 10 1 a b c d e ka adjustment and then you have section number 10 2 ka adjustment section number 10 1 a goes ahead and says that the following if incurred by the buyer are not included in the transaction value that is the price paid or payable commission and brokerage please don't include remember all the commission and brokerage should be included but not buying commission but not buying commission please don't include any buying commission that is paid by the buyer to his agent not to be included i have written it on the side over here buying commission if paid by the buyer to the agent is not included here i want to put one star and tell you that sir service charges which are paid to channelizing agent are not buying commission and always to be included channelizing agent ko service charges paid are not buying commission and they are to be included in the value can i go ahead everyone the next one is cost of container always remember container ka cost is to be included in the value but cost of returnable and durable containers exception it is not to be included the next one over here is cost of packing to be included remember whether the packing cost ke liye whatever you are paying is for labor or material that is to be included the next one over here is any assistance which is given by the importer supplied free of cost or at reduced price to whom to the exporter then they are going ahead and telling over here please include please add the value as a portion please apportion and add are we clear everyone so if i have gone ahead and supplied material some material are coming now later some other material will come so you have to apportion and keep adding to the value of the imported goods so it says over here first of all material including raw material component part item incorporated in the material which you have gone ahead and supplied free of cost please add it tools dies mold similar item used in the production number one which got incorporated and came back number two the tools dies etc which were used that ka value should be apportioned and added thirdly material consumed in the production that should be added engineering development and design work or plan and sketches undertaken elsewhere than in india only should be included if design and engineering is undertaken in india do not include if design development work artwork is undertaken in india then the next one over here is royalty and license fees please include whatever the buyer is required to pay to the seller royalty and license fees is to be included includes that is the payment which is made for patent trademark copyright process might be undertaken after import but whatever the license fees etc you are going ahead and paying please go ahead and include the next one over here is value of the sale proceed of subsequent resale disposal or use of the imported goods if any subsequent sale proceed you are going to pay him and that amount is ascertainable please include it in the value if the amount is not ascertainable subsequent sale proceed is going and that scenario valuation rules are applied to find out the correct value can i go ahead everyone sir remember one thing dividend are never subsequent sale proceed and do not include dividend in your value all other payment made as a condition of sale baba all other condition all other payments any other payment if you are going and doing to the seller which is as a condition of sale 
either you are doing to the seller or to any third party to satisfy the obligation it is to be included can you tell me any other payment ka example dismantling charges you have paid to the seller any dismantling charges remember any other payment for dismantling supposedly you paid him an amount so that he dismantles some machine puts it in a container and sends it to you he charged you you have to go ahead and include it in the value so dismantling charges is one example all other payment made as a condition to the seller or the third party to settle an application will be included and you will get adjusted fob the next one over here is section number 102 section number 102 a is there and section number 102 b is there section number 102 a people over here section number 102 a says cost of transportation loading unloading handling charges associated with the delivery of the imported goods to the place of importation means up to the place of importation whatever is the cost of transportation loading unloading handling charges is there you have to go ahead and include it now sir actual is available take actual actual is not available then take 20 percent of the adjusted fob this adjusted fob you have to take 20 percent remember one thing in case of air in case of air we always compare the cost of transportation loading unloading handling charges in case of air we compare actual and 20 percent of the adjusted fob whichever is lower we go ahead and take it remember cost of transportation is still the place of importation ship demerit charges bars light rate charges also to be included in the cost of transportation but remember one thing whenever you take 20 percent it is always assumed that 20 percent includes cost of transportation loading unloading handling charges from the exporters factory till india whatever the cost of transportation loading unloading handling charges is there all is assumed to be included in the 20 percent if you take 20 percent but if you are taking cost of transportation loading unloading handling charges on actuals then you should always include shift demerit charges bars light rate charges only if transportation has been done on actual basis but we don't include if calculated on 20 percent basis why do we don't include because in 20 percent it is already assumed that it is already ship demerit charges light barges bar charges etc are already included now one thing which student get confused about is ship demerit charges and ship demerit charges bar charges incurred at the port of importation or demerit charges only remember one thing what is ship demerit charges baba ship demerit charges is because the mother vessel is standing over here and mother vessel say goods are unloaded in a small boat and brought to the indian port baba this mother vessel which is standing for that ship demerit charges and for the small boat bar charges are taken at the indian port but these costs are incurred before the indian port only and hence it is to be included but after the unloading of the goods if the goods are lying over here and at the port if any demerit charges because you did not remove the goods the demerit charges will charge those are at the port exact charges and those are not to be included but ship demerit charges and bar charges are at the port of importation also are to be included because they tell that it is at the port but it is actually before only that the cost were incurred are we clear everyone and demerit charges at the port do not include so ship demerit bar charges at the port of importation included but demerit charges only not to be included even though it is at the port of importation now one point clear everyone the second point which i want to go ahead and tell you once the ship hits the port after that any cost is not to be included like do not add transportation to ICD, CFS, container freight station, port to the ICD, port to another port, port to CFS, airport to airport, etc. Transit, transshipment charges, any transportation cost incurred post importation are not to be included. The next one, do not add any port dues, handling charges, demerit charges paid at the port of importation. Remember one thing, once the ship hits the Indian port, none of the cost is to be included. Might be the ship has hit them in, the, in the Mumbai port. Mumbai port ke baad, the goods were taken to the Kandla port. Baba, the next port which is there, in that scenario, remember, the, those transit, transshipment costs, nothing is to be included. Once the ship hits the Indian port, none of the cost to be included. Prior to that, or up to that time all the costs are to be included now here everyone over here now here one thought which is there which lot of students get confused about it remember one thing in your exam if you are going ahead in your exam if you are going ahead and taking 20 percent as your cost of transportation that 20 percent may always assume that cost of loading unloading handling charges from the exporters factory till the indian port are already included in the 20 percent so when you are comparing 20 percent and actual actual may also you should take cost of transportation on the way ka transportation loading unloading handling charges at the us port 
total you should take as actual and that should be compared with 20% of the adjusted FOB because in 20% of the adjusted FOB also you assume cost of transportation, loading, unloading, handling charges is there. So, when you take actual cost of transportation, loading, unloading, handling charges and compare with 20%, in case of air, we go ahead and take whichever is lower. Are we clear? But in all other modes of transportation, we go ahead and take if actual is available, actual. If actual is not available, then we take 20%. Please be very careful about this point. Are you guys able to recall the point? Yes, sir. We are able to recall. The next one. Cost of insurance to the place of importation. Cost of insurance to the place of importation. Actual. Then Baba take actual. If actual is unavailable, till 1.125% of the adjusted FOB. And we'll get the CIPLU over here. Remember, if combined FOB is given in the exam, FOB plus insurance is given, then cost of transportation is 20% of that combined FOB. If combined FOB, that is FOB plus transportation is given, then insurance will be 1.125% of the combined FOB. Earlier, there was something called landing charges, but now no more landing charges are to be included. Remember one thing, landing charges are not to be included. On the right hand side, is there anything additional? Baba, remember, demerit charges paid for delay of clearing from, from the port are not to be included. Demerit charges are poor paid at the Indian port, not to be included. Ship demerit charges include only if you are taking cost of transportation on actual basis. If you are taking 20%, then it is already assumed to be included. Any duties and taxes incurred in India? not included are we all clear with this point the most important point over here is the calculation of cost of transportation remember one thing air i'll talk about vessel vessel ka case mein, if actual is given take actual actual is not given then take 20 percent and that 20 percent when you take remember one thing that 20 percent includes from the exporters factory till the indian port whatever cost of loading unloading handling charges is there that is assumed to be included in the 20 percent are we clear? In case of air, we always compare actual with 20%. Whichever is lower, that is to be taken. Only in case of transportation, we compare. Can In case of air, for cost of transportation, we compare and take whichever is lower. Please come to the next one, everyone. Now, once you have gone ahead and found out the CIF, now CIF has to be, so custom duty is what, everyone? Custom duty is the civil value, which is your CIF value or tar tariff value multiplied by the rate of exchange into rate of duty so sir how do we calculate the rate of exchange and rate of duty remember one thing if goods are if goods are cleared for home consumption that is direct clearance imported by vessel or imported by aircraft you always have to remember duty d is always duty duty is always deferred 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 so in this scenario bill of entry filing date or entry in word whichever is later deferred means later sir in case of aircraft or vehicle Entry inward is not filed in case of aircraft or vehicle and hence it is bill of entry filing date or arrival date whichever is later, later, later. Remember rate of exchange in this scenario is always you never take SBI ka reference, SBI rate, RBI rate, interbank rate, anything told in the exam please don't take it. Please only take CBIC, CBIC ka rate of exchange has to be taken. What will you take? Rate of exchange given by the CBIC only has to be taken. Remember it will be always exchange means E, E means earliest bill. E means the E, E means the earliest bill. Can you tell me bill of entry or entry in word? Bill of entry or entry in word? Which is the bill over here? Bill of entry. So, whichever is the date of filing of the bill of entry, that is to be taken. The next one over here is goods cleared for warehouse. In case of warehouse, you file into bond bill of entry first and then you file ex bond bill of entry. Duty ka case mein, duty is always deferred, which is later, everyone ex bond and hence it will be the date of filing ex bond bill of entry can you tell me exchange exchange means the earliest and earliest means which is earlier into bond or ex bond bill of entry into and hence into is taken in the exam don't write into or x which is later etc directly write over here is the point clear the next one is in case of export export ka case mein first you file shipping bill and then you file late export order which is later everyone which is deferred Late export order and hence it is late export order because duty is always deferred. And Baba, rate of exchange ka case mein, it is the earliest bill. Earliest bill. And earliest bill is the shipping bill. Are we clear? Late export order is not a bill at all. I hope this point is clear. The next one is in any other case, it is always the date of payment of duty. And sir, these provisions are not applicable in case of baggage, goods imported by post or courier because for them, special provisions are there. The next one over here is section number 19 over here. Section number 19, before I go ahead and tell you, I want to go ahead and tell about the export valuation. Export valuation, always remember, custom duty is 
FOB, not the CIF, export ka case mein, place of exportation mein, what is the value, multiplied by rate of exchange into rate of duty, rate of exchange and rate of duty, I have already told you over here, and remember, in case of exports ka case mein, when you are calculating the custom duty, generally, in case of imports, you calculate the custom duty, on that you calculate 10% social welfare surcharge, but in case of export, never calculate what, social welfare surcharge. Now, we have section number 19 over here, special provision for classification of set of articles, or accessories. Remember one thing, if articles are imported in set and might be there is a single price which is given for the set of article, then remember one thing, articles liable to duty with reference to quantity. I want to go ahead and show it from the textbook. Just a second everyone, I will show you from the textbook so that you can remember the example also for this. Supposing you entered and imported articles in a set with a saving kit and all are liable to duty with reference to quantity per unit 10 rupees, 20 rupees, 30 rupees and 40 rupees, the total duty will be 10, 20, 30 and 40. Are we clear? So it says over here, if articles are liable to duty with reference to quantity, chargeable to that duty. Sir, if articles are liable to duty with reference to value and liable at the same rate, sir, in the example, if they are liable to the same rate, then please remember, if the set of article has come for 500, one rate, 10% will be applied and 10% will be the duty. Okay, sir, if the articles are liable to duty with reference to value, 500 rupees per duty will come, but all are different rates. Then remember one thing, if all are different rates, highest rate will be applied. Are we clear everyone? The next one over here is, if chargeable to highest rate. If articles are not liable to duty, chargeable to duty at the rate at which articles liable to duty with reference to value are liable. For an example over here, if supposingly people over here, one item may there is no duty only and all the others are 10%, then the whole art set of articles pay 10% will be applied. If the whole articles pay, one item is not liable and all the other items are different rate of duty, then highest rate will be applied. Are we clear? For an example, one more example which I want to give over here. Supposingly, set of articles have come, set of articles have come and rate of duties are given and article is, importer is giving evidence to the satisfaction of the proper officer that importer has imported into India. What? It consists of multiple articles. Importer produces evidence to the satisfaction or evidence is available regarding separate value. He is telling, sir, 500 rupees, I can give you separate, separate values. Then, Baba, separate, separate rate will be applied. Are we clear, everyone? Sir, if article is supposedly 500 rupees ka set of article has come and one item ke liye has gone ahead and told that this is the value, other items ke liye I can't prove, then one article ke liye if 10 rupees is there, 10 rupees will be applied. Others ke liye if different rate of duties is there, highest rate will be applied. I hope this point is clear. The next one over here is if you have gone and imported accessories, parts and implements, remember one thing, if accessories, parts and implement are supplied along and no separate charges, main article and API, accessories, part and implement will be chargeable at the same rate. Sir, if they are compulsorily supplied along but separately charged, then Baba, individual rate will be applied. Compulsory supplied along but individual rates are there, so individual value is there, individual rate will be applied. Then Baba, if accessories, parts and implement are optionally supplied, both ka case may optionally supplied, no separate charges or charge separately. If no separate charges are taken, then Baba, highest rate will be there because it was an optional, uh, but you still took it. It was optional and you took it. So, what will happen over here? Highest rate. Optional and it was charged separately. They have charged you separately also. Then they are telling respective rates will be applied. Are we clear everyone? Sir, what kind of a chapter it is everyone? This kind of this chapter is A plus grade chapter. 6 to 8 marks will come out of this chapter. What is the main important part of the chapter everyone? This chart is okay only for the purpose of understanding. In this chart, if you go ahead and see over here, this part which is there, rule number 4, rule number 5, rule number 8, rule number 7, 8 and 9. These rules, you should be careful about it. In this rule, rule number 4 and 5 is very important. Now, sir, uh, if you see over here, sir, when what are the reason for the proper officer to doubt the value which was de declared under rule number 11? Can I go ahead everyone? The value which you declared under rule number 11, when can the officer doubt it? Those points are important. Residual method, what is not reasonable means this point also can be important. You please take care of it. Small question. Small question can be asked. C graded, B graded question. Actually this say C graded question can come. This paragraph which is there is a B graded paragraph. But this chart which is there is A graded everyone. One question, six marks will come out of this chart. Are we clear everyone? And in this chart also, you should be very careful about the cost of transportation. If you have done the importation by air, 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 always compare. And when you are comparing, please take actual 
when you are taking actual you should take actual cost of transportation loading unloading handling everything and you should compare with 20 percent clear everyone remember landing charges are no more includable this is very important and the last chart which is there over this this chart is very important because it will help you in determining the rate of duty and rate of exchange remember duty is always deferred a uh, later one and exchange e for earliest bill earliest bill are we clear everyone please practice question answers on this baba this section number 19 can be a c graded question export valuation can be a c graded question which they can go ahead and ask i'll go ahead and close my revision on the chapter of valuation, valuation.